What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode, I'm always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And today, we're beginning a Lenten devotion called Faith of Our Fathers. Stick around. <music> So for the season of Lent, I thought it would be interesting to not only focus on the Word of God, which is vitally important, but also look at that Word through the lens of a faithful saint that has gone before us, as the Bible makes reference to that great cloud of witnesses that has gone before us. Christianity is grounded in human history, not just the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus' actual historical events, but also what the Church has always believed taught and confessed for 2,000 years. So every day, Monday through Friday, we're going to go through the treasure of daily prayer. We're going to meditate on God's word, and we're going to look at that word through the lens of a faithful saint that has gone before us. Now, these could be as recent as the Lutheran Reformation, or these ancient church fathers could go as far back as the second century AD. It all depends. But for day one, this Ash Wednesday, we're starting in the book of Mark, the first chapter. So let's begin. Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 13. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 13. Now this reading comes to us from a document called the Small Called Articles, which was written, if, if memory serves, 1537 by Martin Luther, it was, a, it was a, written in preparation for a, a council. Uh, doctrine was vitally important during the Reformation, and, and hammering it out and finding out what the church had always believed and what the Bible actually says was vitally important. And Martin Luther did a lot of writing. So this reading from the church father, the first church father for this Ash Wednesday devotion of Lent, is Martin Luther. This is what true repentance means. Here a person needs to hear something like this. You are all of no account, whether you are obvious sinners or saints in your own opinions. You have to become different from what you are now. You have to act differently than you are acting now. Whether you are as great, wise, powerful, and holy as you can be, here no one is godly. But to this office of the law, the New Testament immediately adds the consoling promise of grace through the gospel. This must be believed, as Christ declares, repent and believe the gospel, Mark 1, 15. That is, become different, act differently, and believe my promise. John the Baptist, preceding Christ, is called a preacher of repentance, but this is for the forgiveness of sins, that is, John was to accuse all and convict them of being sinners. This is so that they can know what they are before God and acknowledge that they are lost, so they can be prepared for the Lord, Mark 1, 3. To receive grace and to expect and accept from him the forgiveness of sins. This is what Christ himself says. Repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in my name to all nations. Luke 24, 47. 
What a great way to start the season of Lent. This is what repentance is. John the Baptist came proclaiming repentance and baptizing for the forgiveness of sins. And Jesus, likewise, with water, baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. This is repentance. This is being repented. And even repentance is a great, great gift from God. So we read from the Gospel of Mark that Jesus came, was baptized by John, and cast immediately by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness where he was tempted for 40 days, completing the failed work of Adam and Eve, countering the temptation and the twisting of Scripture with the, of the devil by the actual quotations of Scripture, and declaring that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. We pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.